Hi friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to see the slowly changing dimensions type 2 in which we also maintain the historical records which have been updated. Now let us see how to do it. Let us add a data flow task and edit it. Let us add an OLEDB source to a package. Let us configure this OLEDB source. Let us point this source to our OLTP table. It's taking some time. There it comes. So let us point it to our OLTP database. That is Now let us test connection. It has worked. So let us click OK. Now the table that I am going to use as OLTP table is person details table. And as you can see there are two records in it right now for Ramesh and Shyam. So let us select that table person details. So columns are coming. Now let us drag and drop SCD that is slowly changing dimension to our package. Now let us edit it. So as you can see a wizard has started. Now over here we need to specify our dimension table. So let us point to our second server instance which is our destination server instance. And let us select the data warehousing database on that instance. Let us test the connection. So it has succeeded. Now, as you can see, this is the table dim person type underscore type 2. In this table, I have added a customer ID as the primary key. Now let us select this table over here. Okay. So as you can see, there are two or three day columns which are not uh, there in the source table but which are present in this particular table. So let us understand these columns. The first one is the customer ID surrogate key there is auto generate uh, sequence numbers. The, we have also added our new columns for record status which indicates whether this record is current or not. Now as in SCD1 we also have the column for storing our load date. Now let us configure the slowly changing dimension attributes. So as you can see I am configuring the different columns and how they will participate. What is the nature? Are they changing or not? Now important to understand over here is the last column yearly income. I want that if suppose there is any change in data for yearly income it should be stored in historical value. Now click this particular checkbox. Click next. Now I will select the column in which an indication will be kept whether this particular row is current row or, a, or whether this is a historical row. So the current row will be marked with true and historical rows will be marked with false. Uncheck the support for infer dimensions which you will see in some future video. Ok now our slowly changing dimension has been configured. It will maintain now the historical records also if there is a change in the last column that is yearly income. So let us see our current records. There are two records. 
now in the destination table there is no record so let us execute our package so these two records have now been added to our destination table let us verify it so let's go and verify in our database so in destination table now there are two records with customer id as 1 and 2 the records are for ramesh and syam and now we can see record status is 1 so they are new records now let us insert four new records and update three records three times basically in which we'll do one updation particularly for the last column that is yearly income for which a historical change will be maintained so for 1001 record only the historical change will be maintained and not for 1002 because in 1002 only email id has been changed so now let us run so our package has ran successfully now we can see four new rows have been inserted and other updations have been done so let us verify the same thing in our database so let us go to the destination table now you can see that there are seven records so one record is extra right there are four new records now and for the first record for which the yearly income is changed for this record there is an extra row this earlier record has been marked with 0 and a new record has been inserted with the customer id of 7 and for this new record the indication of record status is 